This is Meet Your Maker, and our goal is to see the fails and the successions of escapes from our hell base. So you have chosen death. Welcome mates, I am Bloodthirsty Lord by Incoming Lordy, and in this video, we'll highlight our first social raid base we made available, that being Rembeck, in our previous video, as we explain the understanding of how the base works and the encounters of the many raiders that tried to raid this base from hell. This is gonna be fun, so bring out your chalice and stay hydrated. It looks like we have a whole bunch of rewards, love to see that. Gimme, gimme, every benefit we can get. Not too shabby. I have nearly 15,000 parts as well, that's insane. Parts are pretty much useless in this game. <laughs> oh my god, look at the max level. Give me all those kills. Give me all those tributes. Look how many you got. Absolutely insane. Would love to see that. 28,000 XP. Level 45. We're doing pretty well. And getting closer and closer to that master rank. Very, very close. Let's double check our bases because we've got a couple kills as well. We've got 27 kills in that base. No kills there. No kills here, 3 kills there, 4 kills there, and 38 kills here. But the base that we want to highlight is Rembeck, the social base that we made. We're going to go through why this was made and how it was made as well, because that's something great to see. There's a video that we talked about why it was made, because there's a new hell pack. And that was part of a free update for the game. And the way the base actually works is kind of interesting, because at first, it seems like it's nothing. Now we can see the kill feeds in the distance, all those yellow icons. This is the engaging point. The aspect of entering this system of hell, the gates of hell, as you go through this system. You can hear the weird gooey noises, the sound, the textures, the lighting system that comes with the new pack, the ritual signs. Just giving that fun experience. This base is not meant to be like a base that you can just walk a normal path and complete. That's not there. But we did give some challenges due to the fact that we're playing with this aspect of jumping into hell. So as you get to the very top of this area here, you must jump down, touch this surface here, and then continue. And you can see all the blood splatters on the wall. The decals, the factors of the vibe, the gooey textures on the very top. And you'll be able to echo as you're walking past it as well. It is crazy looking. Then you see some traps. These traps are all invisible. So every trap you see now is guaranteed invisible. And the best way to highlight these traps is by going into the aspect of testing it from here. And highlight what it looks like with the traps active as well. Because that's very important. So it comes from here. There's no traps that you can see at the moment. You enter this location. And you're like, oh my god, it looks kind of interesting. Big open space. You may get some ideas of something being up there, up there, some other locations where things could spawn. If you are very observant, if you get close to these walls, sometimes you can hear sounds. Sometimes. But it's kind of covered up by these sounds here, which makes it impossible to hear the minions behind it. So you see some empty areas. You're like, okay, cool. Jump over, jump over again. Then you get the blue icon showing you casing the way up because many people suffer this up. And they didn't know where to go because they would come here and be like, oh, it's a dead end. They go backwards instead of looking up. So I put this line here to make it easier. So you're able to go up from here, and when once you're up, you get to this point here where the gem mat is. And now it gets a little bit funky, and a little bit interesting. So you'll be able to get the gem mat, and as your first encounter, you need to make sure you hit these traps as quickly as possible, and play hella safe. And know where everything is, obviously since I made this base, it's very easy for me to somewhat complete, but even then, it is a challenge, I will say so. It is a challenge in itself. So you play a little bit of jump puzzle here. As you get lower, you want to be very careful here. I stuffed up already with my jumps. Because the tether pulled me from behind. I think the majority of them died. There's still one alive. Let's hit that guy. Nice. The grapple game. This is now destroyed. There's a trap here as well. It looks like we're safe at the moment. Then from this point here, you're getting forces down there. They don't have optical implants, so they can't actually shoot you until you reach this point here, I believe. And once you go to this point, you got to be very careful. Plasma clouds. Traps on the side as well. The holograms do go off. you got a couple of traps. There was a spy trap from above. Like Bolty Trap, but you can dodge that. Plasma Clouds, again, so you can play really safe. You want to destroy these side's apartments as quickly as possible. Dodge the uh, grabbing. Hit that, hit that, hit this. Go there. Don't get shot by any of these players. Plasma Cloud is still above us, so we're going to shoot that Plasma Cloud. For the texture of the actual vibe of this area, it goes all red because they've been gem out pickup. So all these lights turn to red and it looks kind of cool. So let's destroy this. And from above, you can see the, pretty much the flames of hell. But the, as that flame is going past, if you get too close, the enforcers start to aggro. And the actually be able to shoot through the flames and curse the pits or cubes. So you gotta be very careful on that. So we're gonna destroy that trap down there. Get down there, and you realize there's another trap there, and then my shot didn't actually register. That's weird. I thought that would be able to register. But you fail to bypass this, or try to bypass it, and then it's just constant death, as you see. It is hilarious. I'm gonna try to push through, but I'll get backwards at least to see it all. But it is nuts looking. So many traps simultaneously activating all at once. So you gotta be very careful. So flames again, let's destroy that. It's not hitting that trap, that's weird. I've never seen that before. It might be lagging. Then probably have to destroy this trap. 
Watch out for the Hornets as well. Kill the, those. Watch out for the forces above. Get a shot there as well. Get your ammo, because you've been eating it. Kill these, if you can. Watch out for the Plasma Clouds. Got shot by Enforcer. Shoot that one there. Pick up the bullet. Go for this Enforcer. Armor up, in case you get shot here. Jump up, because they explosive barrels being shot towards us. The cannonballs from the... Over there. So you watch out for that. And you can't shoot these guys, because it's kind of hard to do so, unless you get a headshot. If not, we got armor, and that is very annoying. And I'm out of shots now, and I'm dead. <laughs> but this was the biggest choke point of the whole game. So if you were to bypass this, you have to walk past, get past this area, another flame trap, barricade, and go back up the tunnel very soon and survive and claim your victory of being able to complete this base that is how the base is there's a massive choke point in that one location and it gets very very difficult i would say so because you need to play your cards correct and play at a good pace it's not like an unbeatable base this base is very beatable because it's very simplistic and that was the goal make it simplistic and fun and enjoyable while using the new hell pack and seeing mates go through it we'll go through a couple of seconds now seeing your experiences has been hilarious so that's how the base looks you have a whole bunch of traps here invisible traps Pistons slow down, spikes with usually self-sabotage with some of them. These ones have it over here, but we didn't want to have these ones to have it because if the enforcer steps on it and they back to shoot this or this activates and I shoot it, then all the enforcers die. So we didn't put any uh, self-destruct there. And we've got other points there. Hornets come from above here. Those are just plasma clouds from above. That trap set up and the flames from hell are down below. So every time you jumped, and we'll walk backwards, you can see flames everywhere. And they'll obscure some of the damage coming from enemies, but also enemies can shoot through this as well. It's very interesting, very fun. It only took like half an hour, and then and I think another 30 minutes of refining after the first video, during that same night, as I said, I will do. And it worked out perfectly. I think many people had fun with it, and they thought it was a challenge. Other people found it too challenging, others did not. It just depends how you place I was during these aspects of this Rembeck base, to say the least. Let's jump into those playthroughs and how what your raids were, the mates raids, as I go through their own experiences, because it was quite hilarious to witness for myself. And anyway, we didn't watch all of them, but we're gonna watch the first one together and watch some other ones as well. And our base total got 78 raid attempts, and that's not just solos, that is duos as well, co-op players as well, trying to complete this base. I wish we could actually see the amounts being stolen and stuff, so we know how many people actually succeed from here, but we have to actually go to our lookout over here and double check those playlists of people completing that. And this is the list where it started that same night we uploaded that video. Let's jump into the first play and see what happened there. So this man is running a melee build and a arc barrier with a phoenix pod and also nades. Is this the best build for this uh, actual completion? Maybe not, but the challenge that we enlisted that night was to use melee. One option of melee being the sledge blade or the edge blade to advantage in this actual raid itself, being the social raid. To make it much more challenging, but also much more fun as well, because I feel like many players are not using the melee weapons. They're pretty much deterring from that and going towards other weapons overall, being ranged uh, weapons itself. So let's see what he does here. So he tries to look up. He doesn't know if it's actually there. Has some challenges getting up here. Does he see it? I don't think he's going to see it. He does not see it. That's unfortunate. So this is why I modified the base to make it much more easy to see. He saw it. He saw it. So we're going to slow down the clip here. As he touches the gem mat. There you go. He's got the gem mat. Tries to destroy some of the traps here. I'm not sure this is a fully modified variant as well, because I did adjust it that same night. But he's able to see the piston traps, destroy some of those pistons. He sees the flame trap, destroyed, well done. Good catch, good catch. He's going down using the actual uh, stepping. Oh, he just survived that. Gets uh, crushed, rushed by the warmongers and gets completely destroyed. Those scenarios there are very hard because you're falling down into a pit where they're just waiting for you. You fall, they activate it straight away while you're still in mid-air. That's the difficulty there. Second attempt. Will we have this this time? Let's see. Destroys traps, goes down. Tries spikes, gets tethered. Destroys the tether, gets spiked by the trap there, just waiting there for him to die. Chucks a knee there to kill the mongers, hopefully. Did that actually land? That's the question. Did that land? He destroyed a couple of traps there, which is perfect. Which means he might have breathing room here. Warmongers are dead. Enforcers are there. He's pushing up. The search of that self-destruct activates. Gets pulled by a trap into this, the actual corrosive pit and gets shot by Enforce at the same time because he activated as he was passing that middle corridor. Ooh, that is difficult, that is difficult. He has his Phoenix Pod activated. He's respawned, looking around everywhere, double checking everything. Air Hornet is pretty much getting closer and closer. As he's using his hacks, goes to one of the left nooks but doesn't look up and gets killed by another spike trap. So it's kind of interesting to see how other people play overall and see how they pretty much try to beat a base like this. Because I feel like the starting point 
be able to know where the traps are. It's very easy to complete. The second point, though, that choke point, when you have to pass through that little corridor, that is a bit difficult, to say the least. Because we've used all our corresponding capacity points for that one point there to make sure it's not passable unless you're really playing it well. So many people died to this base, but there was a couple of cold plays and even solo plays completing the base with ease, how it seems to it. Let's jump into another gameplay and see what happened there. There was one death. Was it enough to tilt the player straight away and just jump off? <laughs> so this player is listening to the sounds of the game too. Well done. He's actually double checked locations where things would spawn. Gets to the high point. Missed the actual position to see it. Oh, I don't think he found it. He never saw the gym, man. Oh no. <laughs> this player, I think, rage quit after not finding the gym, man. Maybe he does find it. He saw it. No, he knows where it is. Oh, he just left. He didn't care. He's like, I see the gem out. I ain't going for it. <laughs> and this player might be the first player to actually complete it. And solo too. Go for the melee weapon build. Nice. Love to see it. He's looking at the textures, the vibe of the place. And he's like, oh, wow. That's kind of interesting. That seems good. <laughs> he found it. Nice. He's going to pick up the gem mat and things are crazy. Let's see what he does here. He's destroying uh, traps with the shield. Oh, no. He went back with another grapple because he had no uh, idea where it's been activated from. So he went back to that same area that he thought it was safe, but it gets burnt instead. He's jumping down. He's trying to trap then. Nice. Just realized three warmongers. He dodged them all. Well done. Jumping up. And the plasma cloud from above got him. And it was with direct impact. Because every time you die in Meet Your Maker, you're pretty much learning something about the base that you can use to advantage the next run. Trap. Destroy. 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 Why wouldn't you destroy that? Why wouldn't you? That was easy. Maybe he was trying to time a perfect block. That would be the case there, I think. Got nades, use them. Nice. Into spine trap, then into wall monger hit. Oh my god, that little cheeky combo there is disgustingly good. You got nades, don't be afraid to use them. Don't be afraid to use them. The nades are there for a reason. Come on, you got this. Just nade it. Just nade it. There we go. Well done, well done. Destroyed all the traps there. The wall mongers, did they all die? He, he sees a couple deaths of the wall mongers. Are they all dead? One still alive. The nades will be perfect right there. Nice. Good use of it. All the traps here are gone now. Inactive. Nothing can aggro from this fight until he steps here, which is the plasma cloud alongside the bolt trap, as you can see. He's seen the enforcers from a distance. He's now trying to think of how does he push this with the melee weapon and arc barrier. Because if you run arc barrier in this melee build, you're pretty much in a really bad situation because this will happen when you can't kill traps from afar unless you know where they are. And that is another death from the depths of hell with our Insin trap right there. I think he's trying to think about a way to grapple through without dying here. All the traps are activating. He dodges it. He double checks this little safe spot I made for all the warmongers to come out. Fun fact, this spot here had eight warmongers. So I decreased it because obviously the nade trick that can happen there, you just chuck a nade down and it kills them all. Let's make it less and it'll still be as impactful. Plasma cloud dodge, tether dodge, and traps on the left completed. Destroyed so it doesn't get killed by that left nook. Doesn't know about the right nook. The trap there. Jumps down. Doesn't realize there's a plasma cloud above him. Dodged it. Well done. He's going to get pulled. Just missed. The pull didn't actually pull him in. Very, very lucky. And four shots are missing. The Hornet trying to push through from the center. But I believe he's on short leash. So I don't think he can actually go through. Rushes the actual plasma cloud trap. Nice. I think he got pulled for a second. But I don't have to. The bolt's all there. He's looking at it. It's nearly surviving. He's getting pulled. Plasma cloud right next to him. And he's dead. Absolutely dead. Because he used his arc berry too early. And that cost him. And he has his phoenix pot though. So he's going to spawn back here. So there's a chance to complete it at this run. He's playing a very scary game here. <laughs> Oh, got the hit. Nice. Well done. Goes for a, a attack on these enforcers. Kills each enforcer. Gets... Oh my god. Tether saved him. But the tether got him killed too. Because the tether puts you into a position where any of these enforcers from all the levels around this location can kill you. Because they only need one shot. One shot and you're dead. Simple as that. There seems to be a change of the build here. Looks like he changes arc barrier to a crossbow. A plasma crossbow. This should be kind of interesting to see how this works out. Because that will kill all the minions in that next part. So it's a really smart play. But you have to still be accurate and still be able to dodge. But you have to now dodge with a deflect blade. That is another death right there. Nice. It's working really well. I'll give that. It's working really, really well. Look at those shots from that distance. Instantly tracing those enemies and killing them. I'm guessing he was so used to the edge blade and using that to deflect traps that he uses arc barrier the exact same way. Which is not the way you should be using it. The flames from hell, as you can see. It's very cool. It looks nice in the corridor as well. You see the strengths of the build work together of the base and also his build trying to counter the base as well. Because that's what it is. This game highlights a base and you have to figure out a build to counter the base in order to succeed it. If you want to complete it in its entirety. Dodging all the moves here. Nice shot through the corrosive cubes. He only has one shot left though. He needs to push up to get his other shots. He's pretty much in a situation when he has to. And the only other tool he has for that is using nades to pretty much stop things. 
There you go. All enforcers are dead. There's still the two uh, cannonbacks at the very back on the higher level. And some other traps as well to slow him down. Nice, nice, nice. Will he be able to destroy everything here? He shot the trap. He knows the tech by shooting traps. But sadly, the cannonbacks get you. That is unfortunate right there. That was looking like a really good run. Does that bug count? Oh, nice deflect. He knows the tech. Well done. Respect it. So you can shoot him or deflect him like that. But you have to be really good on the timing. If you're not, you pretty much get killed. That is how the deflect game works in this game. Let's go for the cannonbacks. Missed the shot. Got the kill. Broke the armor. Ooh, headshot. He got headshot for the second one. Easily. There should be one more enforcer. Nice. In the crotch. Oh my god. Goes up, destroys the traps. Dodges the flames, dodges everything there. Nice. Yes, he took a couple of deaths. I think eight to nine, if I'm not mistaken. But with each death, he's learning and becoming better and better while completing his base. Nice deflect. Gets pulled. Destroys that trap. You just have to keep moving around here. Just don't stand still. That is the one thing you don't want to do here. Stand still. Because the plasma clouds will kill you and then you're pretty much GG at that point. Gets pulled. Destroys the chain. And forces already dead. But he's making sure. <laughs> he's timing and deflects are nice. I like that. Bolt the trap. Oh my god, that deflect right there was god tier. He deflected the plasma clad and the bolt sh uh, shots, and also had the modifier homing, which pretty much saved him. And he chucked a nade without knowing what it's gonna do. It destroyed the instant traps behind it. Well done. That nade actually saved it. He destroyed traps without knowing. There's one trap there? Well done. That looks like that could be the last trap, I think. I think he actually completely cleared it. This is what I thought players would do. Take the time to enjoy it and kill every trap that was possible. And just have that vibe of destroying a base that was made in hell. That was the goal. And it looks like this player is going to get this completion. Going through the escape of the hell gates and completing his run. Yes, there we go with the full assignment that he had in order to complete this raid. I'm glad to see that. Well done, well done. And that was by Ripcord, I believe, surviving that base. And it also looks like my raid bases are actually stuffing up. It looks like Ripcord did the base twice, if I'm not mistaken. One here, one later on. Uh, but it looks like the exact same numbers, so it might be a bug in the replay system in Meet Your Maker. But let's jump into this other one. 12 minutes. Did he survive? I don't think so, but we can see the deaths and what happened there in each death, because why the hell not? So pretty optimal build, I would say. He's listening to the sounds and textures. This is what I wanted. I wanted people to experience what the difference is between the normal packs and the hell pack. Look at the signs, the textures, seeing the vibe. I'm loving it. Jumps down. This guy's awesome. I can tell straight away he's having fun. Listen to the sounds, the gooey textures. Look at him go. And it's also kind of disturbing hearing the sounds, the mushy sounds that happen. It sounds like pretty much the game Scorn, if you've ever played that before. Same vibe. Scorn, Doom, vibe, all mixed together. This guy loves the attention to detail. He's taking his time, enjoying every view that could possibly be made. <laughs> but you know what? I want to see this guy die. And it looks like the death is going to happen soon. There we go. The Warmongers backstabbed him. Look at them, smiling, grinning from that kill they got. Looks like we got a weapon switch as well. We're going to Sledge Blade and Arc Barrier. Obviously, you could have done this base without a melee weapon, which many players did. But if you want to have fun, this is a good way to have fun. Oh, no, that was another death there too. Because we have a couple of choke points. It's series of choke points all intertwined together. You've got the choke point in the jet mat, the drop down choke point through a vertical column. Then also the point when you're on the base of that vertical column, what happens there? And then the extension of that vertical column into that corridor and the vertical area that we make that's open, uh, open space, say at least, in the next point. And that all intertwines into a series of choke points, but pretty much looking like one massive choke point throughout the whole map. And instead of putting little traps here and there, it's all pretty much a cluster of traps to see what happens to the player if they're under immense pressure in this area as they try and complete it. Nice little hit there. Destroys traps. Enforces are aggroed. Oh, does he need to move? He need to move. Oh, no. He didn't see it through the plasma cloud. He's waiting for the time for the plasma cloud as the enforcers activated because he broke the trap on the left and that made those enforcers aim him and shoot through that plasma cloud through that middle corridor. Unfortunate. A very dirty tactic. If you want to do bases like that, make sure to use it because it's very good how that works. Oh, the pistons got him. And he didn't actually complete it, but it looks like he had fun either way. And the next game we have is a duo team. Let's see what happened here. There's a couple of deaths, to say the least. They've got a series of interesting builds. One's running with range and edge blade. So the range trap build, heavy trap, alongside the edge blade as well with nades and uh, four shield. For well, the next raider, he's using arc barrier, the trap heavy gun, modified as well with three shots, grenade and phoenix pod. So if one of them survives, they can actually revive the other, even if they died initially. So that's really good to see. Wait, no, they're going up now. Did he just hung onto the other player through the grapple? Like grapple his own teammate? They got the actual pull there. Let's see how they react to this. One player is taking points. The instant trap. Oh my god, did he die? He dead. He definitely dead. There you go. 
This other player doesn't have a Phoenix pod, so he has to revive his teammate. And it has to be Harrison Shaw. He's safe. There you go. Got this revive there. That's the easy part of the co-op experience that you can actually revive. It's like a free Phoenix pod. But this is the bad part. He's dead. He's absolutely gone. His teammate is like, oh no. What do we do? Destroy the traps. That's unfortunate. They didn't aggro on him. Got an easy revive there. Nice. Well done. They're pretty much safe in that vertical column and the base of it. Now they're trying to push through the middle corridor. This is looking like a good run already. Oh my god, the Enforcer got them. Both? No, he got the uh, guy in the back. So he pushed up a bit and the Enforcer killed him from afar. Looks like the Enforcer's not aggro at this point. Got the shot on the legs. Nice. Well done. Shot another shot with the range. Oh, that range shot killed him again. Just is down. So we got this other player trying to destroy the last Enforcer. Got another revive. Well done. Traps, destroy them as much as you can. Gets pulled. And he's dead. The guy with the Enforcer got killed in the middle. This ju uh, just the guy's trying to survive. The streamer. Can he make it? The plasma cloud's going to get him. Arc Barry through it. Walk, walk out. Walk out. Wait, he's safe yet? That's crazy to me. Gets pulled. Did it aggro the other minions? He went into the corrosive pit and he died. Both team members are down. And that's a reset on that run. Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. That is a bit unfortunate. But they're going to try and hopefully pursue this and try to beat it. They spent a lot of time here trying to survive and hopefully win. Working together in cohesion and hopefully trying to survive this. They know there's mongers down there. They have nades for this play. They could use nades easily, but one of the players went down by accident and gets caught by the warmonger. The other player's tracking nades to try and kill the rest of the warmongers. Is that enough? That is enough, but he got pulled. The spy trap is destroyed by the grenades. So lucky for that to occur. And the other player's up, getting his ammo. Well done. And they're pushing up slowly, but surely, and hoping to survive this. Another nade, dodge the enforced traps. Sadly, the actual... Oh, he died. But he got Phoenix Pot, so he respawned. Well done. But it seems like the nade actually went into the little nook in the ground where the flame trap is. His teammate died to the spy trap. Slow reaction speed. But he got caught and he dies. The other teammate also got caught the same way, which means they have to repeat the mission again from hell. Oh my god. This base is driving them mad. Oh wow, this is interesting. Oh, is this like a little like cheating mechanic? Have your teammate spawn behind the minions as one activates the traps. This is kind of cheap, isn't it? This is pretty cheap. Because this is like cheesing it completely. I do not think about this as a co-op uh, situation. His teammate died, which means this player needs to die in order for it to be reset. Let's see. I wonder if the minions were aggro. When they can't see the players, I don't think they're aggro. Even though they're pretty much in close proximity, as you can see right now. Even the traps are not aggroing. So I'm wondering how this player dies. Okay, one of the forces activated. Missed a shot. He's got no shots left. He just realizes he's out of shots. Tries to push up. I think he, this is where he dies. He has to. Yep. Oh, so close. Absolutely so close. Flame trap. Oh, you didn't see that one, buddy. Oh, no. <laughs> but that is a cheesy strat. I don't think that should be accepted in the game. To have one player so far back and the other player clicked in the gem mat. So you can create this situation where you sandwich traps from behind. Which makes it super simple, especially in this map. There's ways of countering this, but it just seems like it's too much to counter, and then you end up having one build that everyone builds, just because it counters this type of setup. He's actually waiting for it, so this was their tactic. Very, very interesting. Does he die here? Oh my god, he got caught. He got caught and died with the same flame trap. He had no clue. So I feel like once you die, you know the trick is there, and it makes it super simple to complete, and also using your own benefit in the future. Oh no, he got caught and died. That is unfortunate. He got pulled, I think spiked as well. And then instant. The tether's still pulling. Look at it. Can you see that? He can destroy that. There we go. Yeah, untethered. Nice. Nice dodges. Will he survive this? I'm very interested. Gets pulled and gets shanked into the spy trap and dies. Surviving it. The uh, just the player died from the plasma cloud as he's destroying the traps from above, or the minions above. So I'm glad that happened because he didn't use his Phoenix pod. Which means this guy has a single life to survive, and he has been doing this push here compared to his teammate, which means he has not enough information as his teammate does on this location. Well done. Gets pulled. Or oh, survive the spikes. Instant trap. Gets spiked by the trap there, though. A little sneaky one there that you don't see when you're dropping in. He lost his Phoenix pod, so this player just died. And he died again. Oh, wow. He's gone. He's out of the books right now. His teammate's trying to survive. And he dies to the corrosive pit as he jumped up into it instead of jumping up to the other ledge. So they die again. Pushing through the center. Gets spy trapped. One of the players. Oh, he actually died to enforce, I think. And his teammate's pushing up through the center again. Destroying all the traps. Found out that little nook there. The little cheeky one. Self-destruct activated by a hornet. That's crazy. The RNG there. Hornet's pushing up through center. 
Do I push through that? I don't think you can. Nice. I'm glad they just linger there. Because that other block that's over their head stops them from pushing through. Well done. Missed the shot there. Plasma Cloud dodge. He's surviving it. The Canabacks over there. So he pushes right side. The Canabacks will activate. I believe so. Nice hit. Gets pulled. Reviving. And that revive got him killed by the Canabacks. Well, the players changed their build completely to range and arc bearing. So they're not doing the melee challenge anymore. So I'm guessing it was too difficult for them. It's kind of cool to see them not use it. To see how they can bypass this and survive it. Because either way, they are getting caught and dying. Even with the use of arc berry available to them. That player died for a from the Enforcer, I believe. And this player here is killing the traps. He needs to make a choice here. He's out of shots. He's going to recent up. Oh no, the plasma cloud got him. This is hilarious. I love seeing this. Because I think co-op in this game is very easy. And with the tricks they're using right now, you can see how easy it gets by doing it. And to see that it's still challenging and still a very well done base overall. Even though I feel like there should be a co-op playlist and a solo playlist. That's what I think. I feel like that makes it much more fun. So some maps are made with cops in mind, and other maps are made with solos in mind. So pushing through, getting shots back, gets shot by the Force and Plasma Cloud, but he has Phoenix Spawn, respawns. Another player is pushing through a center. He's going through, killing the forces on the little nooks. Nice, well done. Other player goes into the center, dodges the Insin and the Spy Trap, kills the Plasma Cloud. He goes through, and he missed the grapple, so he gets shot by the Enforcer. Straight impact, dead. No Phoenix Spawn to respawn him. His other teammates trying to get close enough to respawn him, if he possibly could. He's hoping for the best here. Dodging the Enforcer traps. The best he can. Well done. Gets a revive on his teammate. Well done. Dodges the flame trap. Kills all the tethering traps that you can see. Well done. And this could be completion. There's nothing else that could go wrong here. Unless they really just rush through the end and just die by one of the traps. But they're pie passing this. They're completing it. And it looks like they've got it. They've got this in the bag. The other teammate is going to collect his rewards as well. Being his gym mat. So they actually complete the mission together. But his teammate's waiting there at the point of conclusion. Where he can just pretty much say, I've had a fun time with this base. It's an easy base. Even though they died a lot of times, you can see from the very top. I think it's easily over 20 deaths. Easily. That was really fun to see these players surviving the base. And trying their best to survive it overall. Very, very interesting. Honestly, with the amount of raids we had on a base being 78. There's so much game time on this base. It's unbelievable. Like some of those raids range from like 10 minutes to hours. Like 38 minutes. An hour. That's a different base actually. Uh, some other bases, 12, 20, 22 it just depends. Some plays took a lot of time. The Ryan Beck base is actually crazy. How many people played it? And many people didn't survive it. And others did survive it and actually completed it. Which was really fun to see. And go through those gameplays. Because there's so many of them. As you can see, I could keep scrolling down. You keep seeing the Ryan Beck base all over there. With different times, different completions. Hopefully this is just acknowledging people that actually completed it. 32 minutes. Combined deaths of nearly 30 plus. And then alongside that the actual gen completion by that another cop team another cop team tried to do it failed it so minutes and gave up on it it just depends how everything went down and just interesting to see it all come together because this is such a community thing and i'm glad to see it worked out pretty well we created a base that was based on the new dlc or the new update in the free hell pack and highly what has to offer with an interesting challenge and letting your mates try it out as well and i'm glad you mates had a lot of fun with it especially with all the feedback i've been receiving from the meet your maker videos and the series on the channel but mates tell me your opinions or thoughts in the comment section down below what do you want to see next on meet your maker i'd love to know and should we do more bases like this where you make you mates pretty much rate a base with an interesting challenge and try to survive it and win it and react to it would you think that's a good idea bad idea tell me your opinions or thoughts in the comment section down below as always, mates, it is a pleasure to have you guys on the channel as we go through this, and I'll catch you, mates, next time. Bye. Road to 200k subscribers. Let's get it, mates.